Why are you always making me climb in the smallest of places? Well, Jerry, this is the best way to get to the podcast that we need to steal this week. It's always the Like we do every week on Mondays. Mondays? Every Monday. Religiously. Sometimes I wish we could just walk through the door, but yeah. Every Monday on where where do they find it? On so, yeah, Jeremy, on Spotify, Apple, any, anywhere yeah. you can find podcasts. That's Sorry, where we get, are. I get so hot in these vents. I think they have the heater on. Oh, oh Jeremy, don't move. Oh. Oh, wait. Yeah. Oh, just, oh, oh, no. <laughs> Michael and Jeremy steal your podcast every Monday, wherever you get your podcasts and stuff. We're going to take your podcast and we're going to do it better, faster, stronger, hornier. Yes. In an hour. Or more. <laughs> Sometimes. I need to be more emotionally abusive to the people in my life. <laughs> You know what would show me you love me? Cut your fucking toes. That's it. <laughs> you know, just... I'm going to try that on my wife tonight and see what the hell that goes. That's a... Okay, RJ, Richard, I uh, I need you guys. Something something very important. We've lost something, and I need you guys to help me figure out, like, you know, actually, we didn't lose it. It got stolen, and I need you guys to help me figure out, like, what the hell happened to it, okay? It's uh, it's a very important piece of... Uh, of I guess sporting uh, sporting memorabilia, it's the Jules Ramey Trophy. Okay, Mark's good with the notes. I remember when I was on your podcast, you were noting it up. You oh yeah, notes. I got fucking sticky notes. I that's 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 my world, man. <laughs> that's the only like I'm very analog, very pen and paper, shit like that. I can tell you're very much an organized chaos guy. I can see oh, everything behind you. Fuck, <laughs> you should. I should show you if I could show you my office right now. Yeah, totally. Organized chaos. That's a great way to describe. I'd probably it have a sure. panic attack. I'm glad. Yeah, you yeah. I, uh... <laughs> RJ likes a blank slate white room. Oh yeah, with the yep. desk, one pencil. <laughs> no, this this place Literally, is like, yeah. I, like you know, I got like you know, do you want? What do I got here? You, you need a Hugh Jackman cutout? Here we go. No. Nope. <laughs> there we go. Wait, 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 wait. We got, we got Ryan Reynolds over here. <laughs> do you want Justin Trudeau to appear on today in the episode? <laughs> Just keep coming. There you go. That's it, right? Oh, and then one more, and then and then my co-host on my podcast, Steve. Oh, nice. There you go. That's so it. that's. That's the kind of shit you'll find in here. Yeah. Yeah. This Fantastic. is like a this is like carrot top right now. He's gonna fucking do something <laughs> awesome. We're gonna pull yeah. something great out soon. Well, to right to the left of me is a is a golden T arcade uh, arcade machine. So we play on that. Oh, here we go. This is something else you probably wouldn't expect to see. Here we are. Uh like a horse's head wearing the fire. <laughs> 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 you know what? This is my bad. I knew I would point out the ADHD of someone with ADHD, and then they would just ADHD all over. Absolutely, the place. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, I gotta smoke some weed Love to it. calm down here. Okay. That's a- <laughs> okay. So, uh, okay. Shit. Let me smoke some weed here. Yeah, dude. Do what you gotta do. Okay. Dude, that was a huge bowl. <coughs> That's crazy. You filled up our office with smoke. <coughs> yeah, if you want us to find the Jules Rame trophy, that's fine. Rick would be the better one to do it. There's usually three of us, you know? I, I, I only see the two of you. Who's this Rick guy you're talking about? Well, Rick should be here. Let me go. Let me check. Let's just wait. Like this one sounds like a Rick case. Let's just check. Oh, wait. The answering machine over there is flashing. Let's check. Maybe he's not coming. He calls in sick quite often, actually. I'm kind of starting to think that he's not taking this whole thing seriously. Uh, Hey, Richard. It's Rick. I can't make it to work today. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw, but uh, (laughs) an Argentinian cable channel aired the full Super Mario Brothers movie that just came out last week. Uh, so it's basically available all over the internet. Uh, and as you know, according to my contract, any and all Chris Pratt movies take priority for me. You know, I really wish there was some alternative here. And I, I wish you guys luck figuring out the eel situation without me. But talk to you later, man. Whoa. Cool. He did uh, a callback to the to the eels joke that was never a fucking joke. <laughs> also, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> 
he definitely fucking said Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> oh, it should be it should be like Super Mario. Is yeah, that right. Is, like, I, yeah. Who the fuck says Mario? Oh, a kid that's homeschooled. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we'll solve this one without Rick. I'll just, go, I'm going to shuffle through his desk over here and I'm going to find. Oh, don't go on Rick's desk. Why? What's in his desk, do you think? I, oh, all God. The mouse traps I put in there. Oh, God. Oh, God damn it. I hate you, RJ. An elite team of private detectives. What if balloons are aliens? Like maybe that's the key component we're missing. Cover ups. John's guilty. Mysteries that need to be solved. Maybe Mormons need mountains. Richard, shut up. Our client today is Mark Kosick. Is that how you say your last name? Kosick? Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's fantastic. Most people screwed up, but yeah, no, that's great. You did it bang on. Yeah, Mark Kosick. And he's the host of the podcast, Mark Loves Podcast, Pet and Pot. Is that a, the order of that? Mark, Yeah, Mark Loves Podcast, Pets and Pot. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Fantastic podcast. Just yeah, like I, yours. I was honored to be a guest on it. I was, if you... Want to go check out the pot, the episode that I'm on? It's entitled The C Word. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, was, it so, cunt, was it cunt and COVID? Was that the, were those the C words <laughs> we were talking about? It was definitely cunt and COVID. Yeah. We, we tricked Steve into saying cunt, which that's is amazing. That's right. Yes. We've got that on air. Yeah. We're t- that's, that's recorded nice. somewhere for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Now, is it is it Cossack like the 18th century massacre that the well, Cossacks so committed? Well, so I think we're we're sort I think we're kind because we're Eastern European, right? So I'm, I'm oh from, okay. I'm from Poland, so I think we have some sort of like connection with that. But uh, uh, I've never investigated it too far. I you know because yeah, I wouldn't want to find out I was a genocider either. Yeah, exactly. It's a little <laughs> it's it's a little too brutal, right? So I just kind of like you know play ignorant and just you know live my life from there. That's that's a good move. Otherwise, you end up like Richard. Yeah, I'm German and I know. Oh. <laughs> it's not a good life. I like how that's all you had to say. I got I got a lot of Polish relatives. Uh, yeah, they know they know the Germans quite well. Yeah. Not yeah. as many as you used to. All right. <laughs> that's uh, true. That's true. Yeah. Um, during Mark's podcast, they recommend some weed. The guest recommends five podcasts that they listen to. And then we talk about our pets. Pretty fun yep. little podcast. I enjoy doing it a lot. So, in honor of Mark's podcast, I wrote this episode so it features a podcast recommendation, a pet, and pot. Oh, that's all. Oh, fantastic! Well done, Richard. Thank you. Pot, the pot portion. I couldn't really, uh, I couldn't really shoehorn in without just smoking pot. Like I feel like maybe I'll just smoke some bowls today. So I pulled out the old Sherlock Holmes pipe. Oh, Ooh. oh, wait a second here. Why is this the first time that's been featured? Because I'm. If I get too baked before I fucking add it like a jackass, <laughs> I'm <act> stupid. <laughs> hey. I, I know one too. <laughs> Hell yeah! Look at that. In my in my ADH re- in yeah, my ADH gonna, room. Yeah, of course you had one of those. <laughs> of course I did. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna join you, Richard. Perfect. We're gonna smoke a little pot just because get the pot part out of the way because. It's in honor of Mark's podcast, okay? I usually don't smoke I, no weed before. No one's judging you. You don't need to start making excuses. Oh, I'm not. Uh, this is an excuse. <laughs> I'm just saying, usually I don't smoke because I act dumb. Uh, so it's going to happen. Fair enough. Oh, you got a vaporizer going on there, RJ? Nice. Yeah, it's uh, it's just nicotine, though, because I'm a hopeless addict. <laughs> hey, you know, you got to be addicted to some things, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Plus, you get hard time in the states for smoking weed. I guess in New York, no, okay. no, 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 not anymore. Yeah, New York, you don't. That's lame now in in America. I guess so. <laughs> it's all about the mushrooms now. That's where it's going. That's where it's headed. I think all drugs yeah. eventually will just be legalized. Honestly, to be honest, I'm looking forward to the days that that will happen. Yeah, I can't wait to get my store bought smack. <laughs> <laughs> to to go in line with this, this is uh this is what root beer float from our, oh. our dispensary here. So it's got a. THC of, uh, what has it got here? 347 milligrams per gram, 37.7% THC. Oh, fuck. That's a good one. That's a pretty good one. So that that part's done. There's also something else that I know Mark loves by just knowing who Mark is. It's sports. Mark's a sports fan, big time sports fan. So I kind of like jimmied all of Mark's love into one podcast. That's kind of what I try to do. That is very, that is really nice of you, Richard. Really of you. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Just all this for me. That's I just yeah. oh. 
Yeah. You know, I feel bad for Rick for missing all this. I'm surprised you didn't like squeeze sports some way into the podcast. Like Mark loves blue Jays, smoking Jays and fur bay bays. Well, yeah, I'm actually working on a separate little sports podcast. I want to do in this over the summer that, uh, that, that involves the, the, the Jays baseball mainly, but yeah. Yeah. I, uh, so I'll, I'll do a sports one, but not, not to do Cause it doesn't start with P either. Right. So I need the alliteration. And, yeah, uh, I, you know. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. Are you a soccer guy? Because this is what I I can only find soccer in sport. Like I, could, I am. I couldn't fit it all in. Okay. I, I am. <laughs> I was born in England, so I am a soccer guy. Like my family, my family supports uh, Nottingham Forest in the Premier League. Uh, my dad's a big Notts County fan, and uh, I know that if you've been watching that Welcome to Wrexham show, Notts County is one of the big rivals of of Wrexham. So uh, I've been kind of disappointed to see that Wrexham has 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 done better than Notts County. But yeah, no, I'm a football guy. I. I love my World Cups, my uh, my Euros, all that kind of stuff. Wicked. So, uh, yeah, Wicked. yeah, I'm I'm on board for this for sure. Awesome. So today we're going to talk about the famous unsolved robbery of the Jules Rimet Trophy, and I know you know that because you hired us to do that. But uh, I just got to say it. Uh, so, what's the Jules Rimet Trophy? Well, it's the original prize for winning the World Cup. Uh, it's named after the longest serving president of FIFA and a man who proposed the World Cup tournament during his tenure. It was crafted in 1929 by French sculptor Abel Lafleur. Jules Rimet trophy was made of gilded silver and sat upon a lapis lazuli base. Now, I read in a bunch of places it's gilded silver and other places where it's like gold-plated sterling silver. Those are two different things, just so everybody knows. Like, gilded silver is like silver mixed with gold. It's not just plated with gold. So I'm going to go with the gold-plated silver. I just like saying gilded silver. Just so everybody knows, gold-plated silver, because I think that makes more sense by the weight of it. Either way, it's like a valuable piece of – either it's valuable. It doesn't just not as valuable as solid gold is what everyone tries to make it sound like, but it really isn't. At the time, it was insured for $30,000. This was in 1966, so I just want you guys to know that's like basically how much it was considered to be worth, 30 k Today's money, that's just under 600000 US dollars. It stood 35 centimeters high, which is 17 inches. And weighed 3.8 kilograms, which is 8.4 pounds. If that was pure gold, like they claim, it would have been weighed a lot more than that. It's just to say a bit bigger than a wine bottle. Uh, the trophy was not what it is today. Actually, it's a different design. It was a decagonal, 10-sided cup. Okay. Cup supported by a winged angel-looking goddess. The figure represents Nike, the ancient Greek goddess of victory. The, who? Nike. Like... The goddess of victory. How did I never know that that's where that came from? I didn't know either until I started reading this. I was like, oh, that makes sense. Huh. And she would uh, ride her chariot around battlefields, giving fame and glory to the victors. Just screaming, just do it, Adam. <laughs> yeah, just do it. <laughs> cut, his, <laughs> cut his head off. Because <laughs> you know that's what they're victory for. They're covered in blood and she'd come down and be like, good job at killing. They actually had to, to shorten the slogan because it, there used to be a comma pussy after it. <laughs> <laughs> the cup wasn't originally called the Jules Rimet Trophy. It was named that in 1946 to honor the competition's inventor. Before that, the trophy was simply called Victory or the Coup de Monde, which is just French for World Cup. It was un first unveiled at the 1930 World Cup and traveled every four years from each winning country to each winning country. There was a different rule set back then. I don't know if you know this, Mark, but Rimet, when he made the trophy, when he got the trophy made up, he had one rule to it. So whichever country would win the trophy three times got to keep the trophy forever. Oh, so okay. In, in perpetuity is what they're saying. So like, like, like they, they would keep the, like the actual trophy or yeah. like, uh, and then would they make a new trophy, I guess? Yeah. Or would that's, oh, that's shit. why they're, that's okay. why there's the new one there is now. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, okay. So, so whoever won three in a, or it didn't have to be in a row, just whoever won the first time they won three, they got it forever. So do they have the same rule applying to the current trophy? Like the next team to, to win it three times gets to keep it forever. No. No, no. Oh, I, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, the trophy went country to country. Like I said, it survived World War II from the Nazis being hidden in a shoebox under the bed of an Italian FIFA official. Yeah. No matter how hard you fucking tried, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> in 1966, England was to hold the World Cup competition for the first time. Like it is now, 16 teams from all over the world qualified for that year's chance to win the Coupe de Monde. In preparation for the World Cup in January of 1966, the Football Association, the FA, took possession of the cup from the current champs, Brazil. 
Brazil actually had won the two previous World Cups and had the cup for the last eight years. Now, the FA's job was to safeguard the statuette until the winner is championed at the competition that was to be held in July. Victory was stored away at the FA headquarters in Lancaster Gate, London. It's, I fucking find it weird to call it Victory, but I have to because it's called Victory. But <laughs> it trips me out. Victory was under heavy guard at the FA headquarters. That's except for a few promotional events. They would rent out the trophy to go to places while it was there, right? So in February 1966, only a couple weeks after the FA got possession of the trophy, the Stanley Gibbons Stamp Company received permission to display the trophy at their nerdy stamp convention called Stamp X, which is fucking hilarious to me. <laughs> it's like Stamp X doesn't exist anymore. Uh, let's just say that it's gone. She gone. Are you telling me stamps aren't still really big? Yeah, no, they're not. We don't. Uh, we don't have huge stamp following. I know today. it's fucking random, but this this blew my mind. Uh, what, what I'm about to tell you is shit blows my mind. Like. Okay, so their display with the World Cup was entitled Stamps and Sports, and it had like a bunch of like sports stamps around it, like different baseball players, shit like that. The World Cup was the main event, the sports theme stamps all around it. Stamp X was held at the Methodist Central Hall in Westminster, and usually a pretty busy place, that place. Central Hall is not only a church for like a Methodist church, it's also like a conference center. It's a huge tourist attraction. It has an art gallery, a restaurant, uh, an office building. It has 22 conference rooms. One of them is called the Great Hall, and it seats 2,300 people. So many historical figures have actually made speeches in there, like Gandhi, Franklin Roosevelt, like all shit tons of people over the history have been in there. It's a pretty famous fucking place. Now, the stamps that were being held at Stamp X, the stamps had value in the 60s. And I guess these stamp nerds had enough money to rent out one of the conference rooms and display the goddamn World Cup. It was said that at the Stamp X, there were 50 million pounds of 1966 pounds worth of stamps at the exhibition. Holy shit. That's 50 like that's a lot. 50 million. That's how much is that today? It's in the bill. It's like hundreds of millions, if not a billion. Jesus Christ. I, and look it up. It's a ridiculous amount of stamps. Stamp X started on March 19th, 1966. And the display of the World Cup was extremely popular. Probably one of the most popular parts of the whole thing. Can I can I say real quick? I thought that was how much weight of stamps there was for <laughs> way too long. <laughs> I, like it, it should be. I mean, like I'm not. I'm not trying to make like a dumb joke because like ooh, their money is called something silly. I literally thought, I'm like, how do you even? That's all of the stamp. It's got to be all of the stamp. Every stamp ever. I didn't even put two and two together. That's why you thought because the pound, the British pound. So that's we're both on the dumb level. Oh, I, all right, yeah. I, I was like, why do you think it's the weight? What the fuck? <laughs> oh, because you guys, yeah. right. I could totally see though. But we they, like you're not high, so I, I guess that's not an excuse for that. But uh, yeah, no, totally. You know. No, I'm just American. So <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, there you go. He's got a grade six education compared to our high school. Sixth grade, bitch. <laughs> We've went over this before. <laughs> While at the expo, the trophy was guarded 24 hours a day by a contract security company named Alsa Guard. There were two uniform guards at night watching around that area during the day there was also two plainclothes officers watching the cup along with the two uniformed ones these guys mostly locked the trophy up in the hall and sat in their office drinking tea and eating crumpets and i'm saying i'm not trying to be funny like <laughs> britishisms with that it's literally what they wrote like they would be drinking tea eating crumpets i've done that before i've been a part of something like that it's it's real it exists yeah. it's constant yeah it's not like they, they just sat there watching it making sure it wasn't getting stolen it was like locked in a display case and they just left it there when overnight and shit like that so no one's like watching it all the time right so whenever the exhibition was open though there was additional guards standing beside the trophy at all times so six people watching this fucking thing when it was the busiest of times okay our story starts on a sunday the expo was closed on sunday march 20th as the hall was used for methodist church services and sunday school so the hall was open to churchgoers, but the room they had the trophy and stamps in were held, uh, like were closed. It was like locked up. Millions of pounds were the stamps and 500,000 pound-ish value of trophy, like $50,000 trophy was held in this little room, locked 
on the lower level. One guard passed the trophy display case around 11 a.m. and it sat there with all of its shimmering glory. The guards, like I said, were at their office nearby, but they weren't looking at the display case. They were just doing, from what I understand, they were doing like every hour they would go like do a walk around and make sure everything's good to go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The exhibition hall was locked, padlocked, and chained up. And they also barred the back door with a wooden bar, like through the handles of the thing. So it was fucking pretty guarded in there. The next time any of the guards passed the trophy case was around 1210. And that's when it was gone. They noticed it was gone right away. The padlock that had been locking the case was removed along with the trophy. The back door that was barred with wooden plank was wide open. The wooden bar and the chains were sitting on the ground beside the door. The thieves had entered the room after they removed the screws and bolts that held the door handles from the other side. So they just (laughs) unscrewed the door handles. So putting that bar up wouldn't have done anything really <laughs> like if it was more just there like just display than anything else yeah it just fell down huh. displayed like the trophy scotland yard was immediately called and central hall was beaming with bobbies in no time yeah what what is scotland yard have we talked about that because we've said it a bunch of different times on on the show but i I have no idea what it is it would be like fbi or whatever yeah is it okay yeah british people so why is it because their FBI is in Scotland or is that like a place in England proper just called Scotland Yard? I think it's named after a place. I think it was just a, a place called Scotland Yard in England where and then they just hmm. kept. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, but it is like the FBI. It's the FBI. I'm not sure why it's named that. It would be very funny to me if it was exclusively in Scotland and then they did like secede <laughs> from the UK and they just took the entirety of their federal police with them. <laughs> I think that's a fantastic idea, but I think like our guests, our European ancestors have some like weird shit going on. Because like this case, look, Scotland Yard takes this case and they pass it on to their robbery squad, which was nicknamed the Flying Squad. Like why? They just called it the Flying Squad. I don't know why. I looked it up. The English are very dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that there's a lot of stupid names for shit. Yeah. I mean, I guess they named stuff first. That's where the language came from. But yeah. I mean. And we just went, yeah. nah, we're not calling police officers bobbies. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, no, what? I gotcha. <laughs> when the Flying Squad shows up, there's not a lot of evidence to go on, really. Like, none of the guards saw anything happen specifically, and no one heard anything. No fingerprints, okay? There were some suspicious people seen, though. So there have been reports of from the guards that someone they saw at a payphone just outside around 1130, facing the phone. He was around five foot eight, wearing a black suit, dark colored tie, medium build, black hair slicked back with thin lips and a long face. Very specific. the paper the newspaper originally reported it said that the guy also had a scar on his face which i was like holy fuck that's pretty crazy a scar guy like they should have found this guy this is very specific they have scar face fucking black hair how many how many people saw this guy was it just like one or a handful of people one guy noted him i'm sure lots of people saw them because it was church time so I'm sure a bunch of people just walked past him but didn't really report seeing him. But the one guard did see him. Maybe some people in England just really look like James Bond villains. Like, <laughs> that's why they... It's even dumber than that, actually. Years later, after some people got to read the case file on this, they found out that the scar part was a typo and guy was wearing a scarf around his face. Uh, I thought oh, it was, my... Uh, oh, jeez. So it got reported. Everyone's looking for a scar face guy right off the bat. But that's not even close to what... Sh- should have been no one even retracted or nothing jesus so so they're looking for a guy with thin lips and a black suit with a scar on his face and 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 obviously they're just going in the wrong direction like from the get-go right off the bat all because someone forgot to put an f at the end of scar they typoed it right off the bat isn't that uh isn't that funny there's also another witness that's well i shouldn't say witness but like someone who saw another person who's suspicious this guy was a lady who was attending church her name was mrs coombs I couldn't figure out her first name. Let's go with Eleanor because it's very British. Lady attending church named Eleanor Coombs. Even if that's wrong, I don't give a fuck. She saw a suspicious guy outside of the women's bathroom. He was just standing there and he was like light brown haired guy wearing a tan colored jacket. And he was about 5'10". But she didn't think anything of it at the time because she thought he was standing there waiting for his wife. But like, wouldn't you notice the wife in there when you went in to go to the washroom? Wouldn't you be like, oh, wait, there's that guy doesn't have a wife. There's no wife in here. 
two different descriptions, two different guys that were suspicious. So did they think this was just one person that did this? Uh, they were considering all options because they weren't really sure what the fuck happened. Uh, Dora was gone. Within an hour, it disappeared. What the fuck? And they don't have really any witnesses. It's church time, right? This is all they have. Those two guys or those two, one guy, one lady. The press got a hold of the story. And by the next morning, if you can guess, England was a worldwide laughing stock. The Brazilian Football Association members were, I think it's, sorry, Brazilian Football Confederation members were absolutely pissed, like furious. They went on record to say that this would never happen in our country. Even their gangsters love football and would never do such a thing. So, like, I find that hilarious. So, like, our criminals would never be that criminal. <laughs> our our criminals are nicer than your criminals. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Especially when it comes to football. <laughs> so, the next day, Joe Mears, the chairman of the Football Association, received a call from a man named Jackson. Now, Jackson told Mears that he knew where the trophy was and that by the end of the week, he could get the trophy back. Mears laughs off Jackson. He says, okay, whatever, buddy. Uh, then Jackson asks Mears, did you get my package yet? Huh, Mears? Uh, Mears finds out that he actually did have a package sitting on his desk. He tells him, open it up. I'll call you back. And he says, you'll believe me after I, you open that up. So he open, he hangs up, opens the thing up. Inside the package was the removable lining from the top of the trophy. So the only thing that would ever have that would fit that. And then also there was a ransom note. Now the note stated that they wanted... 15,000 pounds in five pound and one pound denominations. Get that all ready. And then we'll make up a meeting spot. If all goes well, it says on the thing, we'll, you'll have the trophy back by Friday. That's not reasonable. It's way too heavy to bring to a, a meeting spot. I mean, were they That's meeting so on a loading dock? <laughs> so you're going to, you're going to laugh. You're calling all this shit before it even happens. I like you, RJ. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So Jackson, calls Mears again within moments. Uh, this time, Mears is taking Jackson a lot more seriously. Uh, in this phone call, Jackson warns Mears that if he went to the police or the media, they would never see the victory again. Um, he'd melt it down, sell it off. He knows he's not going to make as much by melting it off, but he'll be safe. So if you mention anything to cops or the media, you're done. It's over. Short time later, so they hang up that phone call. Mears is like, oh my God, what do I do? Short time later, Jackson calls Mears back for a third time and says, uh, did I write one pound denominations? I meant five pound and 10 pound notes. I don't want one <laughs> pound denominations. So like, I feel like to me reading that detail, like that seems like an underling who got off the phone telling his boss, like I told the guy $1,500, one and five pound denominations. Sounds like they're going to do it. And then the guy's like, the boss is like, did you say one pound denominations? You know how heavy that's going to be? I told you five or 10 idiot. Call it back. <laughs> I feel like that's well, what's going on here. And if if and and back then, if if it was like it was one pound coins, it wasn't even paper money. Like they, this would have been fifteen thousand coins. Yeah, they exactly. Were dumping in their laps for them. Holy shit! Yeah, good thing he called back then. Yeah, I, is that true? Did, you guys don't in in Canada. You don't really have one dollar bills. It's because of coins. No, no, we got loonies and toonies. Yeah, so the, okay. the, sm the smallest bill we got is five dollars. And in England, they've got one pound coins, and then it was like five, I think two pound coins and like five pound notes, five pound notes as well. So, no yeah. Shit. So, you guys are still holding on to those dollar bills, eh? Yeah. Well, it was funny because I thought she was fucking with me, but Celeste was saying that they throw coins at people at strip clubs. No, they shouldn't. In Alberta, apparently they do throw. That's, I've heard that. Yeah. That's where she's from. Yeah. That's where she lives. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my wife for her bachelorette party, they went to the strip club and they never been to the strip club. Her and all her friends didn't fucking know. They brought a bunch of coins and they started chucking them at the strippers <laughs> and they got, they oh, got fucking booted out. <laughs> <It's a tasty. laughs> Don't chuck coins at the strippers. What are you doing? So that's fucking funny. In Ontario, it's still it's five dollar bills. You want you want to throw? Yeah, you got to throw five dollars at the dancers. Oh Ontario. man, so you yeah, can only yeah. throw like. Five times less than, or she's well, got, like, yeah, she's got to be a really good dancer, like you know, for, worth five dollars, <laughs> right? You know, you can't, you can't dilute it down. No, yeah, that absolutely. sucks. You really got to yeah. feel what you're worth yeah. when you yeah, go out yeah, on yeah. that stage. Yeah, yeah, is she worth it? You know, or you oh. just like tear tear the five dollar bill into little pieces and so you can tear it. You know? <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, and it's and if you that's like that's hard to do because we have plastic money too. Oh, that's so true. You can't yeah, even like rip plastic. it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I fucking find that hilarious that the guy called back and went, wait a second, I don't want one pa- I don't want coins. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking so funny. So regardless of the threats, Mears calls the police immediately. Uh eventually he gets a guy named Detective Inspector Charles Buggy. He is from the flying squad, from the robbery squad. Uh, Buggy, once learning what's going on, acts right away. uh, And he reassures Mears that you did the right thing, man. You did the right thing. So the first thing Buggy does is he calls the bank and he gets them to make him a suitcase filled with a fake ransom. Like the classic one you see in the movies where you put the top layers of the wad of cash is like actual cash. And then the inside is just like paper. He like called the bank and apparently the bank will do that for you. Like I'm going to ask the bank to do that for me. So is this, is this just to make you look like you have more than you actually. Exactly. So like you, you walk in there with, with a hundred dollars in, in fives and they'll make it look like a thousand dollars in fives for you. Is that it? Apparently that's what buggy can do. He's got the power to make them just make them a fucking fake wad of money. I cool, man. Nice. They had to make a place an ad in like saying where the money was gathered and where we're going to meet up. I don't know. It was fucking stupid. They end up meeting up anyway. They find an exchange point. Mears brings the money to arrest the thief on the spot. So that's the plan. Okay. We're going to get the, we're going to get the thing. We're going to get the money. We're going to meet up with them, arrest them. Done. All right. So Mears was going to be the guy. So Mears wasn't going to go alone. There's going to be two officers going with them that were going to pretend to be his assistants. But the problem was Mears had a bad heart. So, and all this shit was really stressing him out, as you can imagine, as it would, right? You're the president of the football association. You lost the fucking World Cup. I imagine you're under a lot of stress. And he had a bad heart. So, when Jackson calls on March 24th, Mears was in the middle of an angina attack. He was just dying. (laughs) Like, I can't talk to this guy, wife. So, when his wife picks up the phone, she doesn't know what to do. So, she passes on the receiver to Detective Inspector Buggy. Whom she was like, this is his assistant. Uh, his name is uh, McPhee. McPhee, the assistant. <laughs> so she passes the phone over to McPhee. And after much trepidation, Jackson and McPhee arrange a meetup at Battersea Park near the gate. So Buggy was to go there as McPhee and deliver the cash. So it's kind of actually works out better for Mears because he probably would have fucking died. He probably would have had a heart attack and just ended himself there. So Buggy and an unmarked police van, which was out of view, went to meet Jackson. And when they meet up with Jackson, pretty much right away, Buggy opens up the case, revealing what looks like an impressive amount of money. Jackson does not notice that it is paper. He thinks that he has all the money because he kind of does the look at this. You can't have it until I like I need proof of life. Where is the goddess? Uh... Where is the goddess? So Jackson says that he doesn't have it with them, but they'll have to take a quick ride to go get it. So Buggy says, okay, sure, jump in, I'll drive. Which Jackson does. He gets inside of his unmarked police car. And off they go. And on their way, Jackson's acting very nervous. And it's because he looks behind him and he sees that the flying squad van is following them in the distance. So at a stoplight, Jackson gets out of the vehicle saying, I'm going to go grab the trophy right now. I'll just be right back. You wait here. And he's like, I'm in the middle of the fucking road. I can't wait here. So he pulls off and then he sees Jackson walk around the corner. He's like, "Uh Oh, I think he's going to run away. So he kind of like pursues him in the car, but not too crazy. He goes around the corner and as buggy turns the corner, Jackson pops up in front of him in the car and yells at buggy. Like, dude, I told you to wait. What are you doing? And Buggy's like, I, you know what, man? I just thought you were in trouble. So just get back in the car. He's like, there's someone following us. I swear to fucking God. He's like, there's no one following us. Get in the car. We'll go get it. He goes, Jackson gets back in the car, which now Jackson's a fucking nervous wreck, but he's still trusting Buggy, which I'm shocked. I'd be gone. Like if it was me, like, see you later, man. But then Jackson sees the van again. This time they're going a full clip, like 40 kilometers an hour. They're driving. But without saying anything, Jackson jumps out of the moving vehicle, like, Tucks and rolls. I'm out. Uh, Buggy this time pursues again. Uh, he ends up catching this guy by car and by foot until eventually capturing him in someone's garden. 
So, like, I just picture him Goldberg spearing this fucking guy right into a head of lettuce. This was my picture of the whole thing. I don't know if that's how it happened, but that's nice. what I wanted to happen. So, once Jackson is in custody, Scotland Yard realizes it was a perpetrator very familiar to them. Jackson's name was actually Edward Betchley. He was a petty thief and a used car salesman. Now, I'm not sure which one's worse. Redundant. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, uh, got him. Got him. Take take <laughs> that him. used car salesman. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't getting back up now. Or, or maybe take that petty thief. Oh, even yeah. worse. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd rather be a petty thief than a used car salesman. Yeah, for sure. That's what I'm saying. Seriously, Fuck those yeah. Guys. yeah, damn right. Yeah. So they knew this guy was a petty thief. They they don't have any interactions with him in the past. So Betchley told the police, you know what, man? If you give me bail, I'll go get you the trophy right now. And they're like, Yeah, right, fuckhead. We're not giving you bail. Are you serious? You're sitting, you stole the fucking World Cup, man. You're staying. So, needless to say, Betchley does not bring them the trophy, but Betchley does eventually talk. He claims that he didn't even steal the trophy. All right. I'm, I'm a patsy. It wasn't me, man. I was offered 500 pounds to act as a middleman for this whole thing. Uh, and Betchley to also said, like, I don't even know the guy that hired me. All I know him is by his nickname, which is The Pole. He wasn't even sure where the trophy was right at the second. That's why he has to leave. Like, if you want, let me leave. I will go get it. I have to call the poll. Well, give us the poll's number. I'm not doing that. This guy will get me. How do you know? You don't even know him. I'm not doing it. Give me bail, man. Like, it's not, doesn't really make sense. Like, dude, just tell them who the fucking guy is. But he didn't. Either way, they booked him. And Betchley's charged with robbery and a charge, which I find is very British, Maybe it, maybe not. It's called demanding money with menaces with intent to steal. Yeah, that sounds very British. The robbery charge is eventually dropped, which is odd if you think about it. Like, you feel. I guess there's no real evidence that he even had anything. In court, Betchley really didn't stand a chance. Miss Coombs, the the lady who had seen a man lurking outside the women's bathroom, identified Betchley as the man she'd seen. Uh, the security guards said it wasn't the same guy with the scarf face. But the other girl did. <laughs> Betchley was eventually convicted for the charge of demanding money with menaces and with intent to steal and received two concurrent sentences of two years, which is also weird because demanding money with menaces with intent to steal had a potential life sentence attached to it, which I found crazy. I'm like, holy fuck, that's a pretty big fucking charge. So he got two years for something he could have got life for. Hmm. You have to say with menaces, like with menaces. With menaces. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm terrible at British accent. I fucking wish I was good. I'm so bad. You at it. you do have a, you do struggle with accents, and that is so fun. <laughs> <laughs> with man, is it? I don't know how to fucking do it. <laughs> that was like three syllables, and I still yeah. snooze way off base. <laughs> Not even close. I know I'm oh. fucking terrible at it. I know how to not. Oh god! I gotta I like think that. of the Beatles. That's how I think of a. Br- uh, I can't even do it. I can't. My brain does not. Fucking <laughs> <keep you. laughs> I did. Oh, I, I could do. I did Southern lawyer the other day. That was good. That was a good yeah. one. Huh? Do do with menaces. But as a Southern lawyer, give us the charge. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> 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 no, I said I did do it. I'm not, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying I can. I can't right now. I do it now, my, Richard. Where's do my bike? Where's my bike? <laughs> uh, I was. Saying, I like how you have to. Th- like you thought about it for a second, and then you're like, <laughs> no, I, no, I'm still good. Still yeah. counts as a valid effort. It, 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 it <laughs> did look like you were trying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My like, brain can't do it right. Yeah, uh, it's just not there. It's just not uh, there. Uh, what is it? Uh, where's the thing? Demanding money with. I can't fucking do it. <laughs> All right. Demanding so, money with menaces. Yeah, you gotta uh, get that. Demanding money with menaces with intent yeah. to steal. I risk yep. my case. All right. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That was, that was pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. He got two years, uh, which he was released in 1968. Uh, he dies shortly after his release of emphysema in 1969, never revealing who the pole was or if he even existed. So, what happened to our girl Nike? Well, here's the official story. On March 27th, a guy named David Corbett was walking his black and white collie named Pickles in South London. So here's the pet. Oh, nice. Okay, sweet. 
As they were about to begin their walk, Pickles starts to fuss and sniff underneath a hedge at the end of their driveway. Corbett went to look what had gotten Pickles so wound up, and he found a package that was wrapped in newspaper and tied up with string. Ever the curious Cockney, Corbett opens up the package to find our missing trophy in all of her victorious glory. Oi, Pickles, what have you got there? Yeah. Pickle. <laughs> oh, nice I, job. <laughs> that that totally Thank British you. right there. Thank nice you. job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I have the teeth for it, so I tend to be very good at it. <laughs> yeah, so he uh, finds it wrapped in a piece of... So Pickles finds it, okay? Uh, Corbett immediately walks the trophy to the nearby police station and turns it in to the disbelief of the police that were working looking for it at the time they didn't believe him they're like this isn't the trophy and it fucking was the jewels remade trophy was given back to the fa who promised to keep it under lock and key until the new winner is crowned and the queen can deliver them their cup uh, immediately after the trophy is found the flying squad uh suspects corbett of perhaps being the pole which is quickly dismissed because he had a rock solid alibi What's the alibi? I don't know. I tried to look it up. I have no fucking clue. Pickles was with me the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him, Pickles. <laughs> Pickles looks a lot like Silly. Yeah, he's a uh, collie. Yeah, nice like... little collie. Black and white collie. Nice, nice little dog. Nice looking dog. Cute. Yeah. Cute as shit. Silly. Well, that's it. Nah, she's, she's being shy. You know what? I have a great idea. Let's associate pickles with silly because I like this. What's coming up? Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> what I do know about this entire thing is that Corbett was given six thousand pounds for finding the the trophy, which is like one hundred and seventy seven thousand American dollars today. So that's a shit. Wow, ton of fuck! That's not a bad little chunk of money, is it? No, Jesus. Yeah. Pickles, on the other hand, became a national superstar. He was on the cover of every newspaper. Pickles was awarded the silver medal of the National Canine Defense League. Hmm. The National, I had to look it up. The National Canine Defense League is still around today, just under a different name called Dogs Trust. Uh, it's been around actually since 1891, and it's the largest dog welfare charity in the UK, caring for over 15,000 animals a year. Oh, so it's defense of the canine. I thought it was like a league of defensive canines. Yeah. <laughs> they just like, give them like fucking the swords and shit. They defend us. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, they guard Scotland Yard. Yeah, yeah. There's pictures of Pickles winning his award, and he's very cute with it. He's very happy to win his award. He's got his own Wikipedia page. He definitely does. Yeah. Pickles, Pickles has <laughs> That's I found him. That's fantastic. He was awarded Dog of the Year and given a year's worth of food by the dog food manufacturer Spillers. England ends up winning the Jules Rimet Trophy that year. So they won the, the World Cup. And Pickles and Corbett were invited to the celebrations. Pickles was so famous, he even got an agent and starred alongside Eric Sykes and June Whitfield in the 1966 film Spy with a Cold Nose. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. hundred percent serious. hundred percent serious. This is where I'm going to throw in the trigger warning for our episode. Okay. Trigger warning. That was really fucking intense. There's a trigger warning in this episode. I, oh, I was, Oh God. I know exactly where you're going with this too. Go for it. So about a year after finding the world cup, Corbett's kid had pickles on a leash, bringing him outside. As Corbett's little kid walked out the door, Pickles saw a cat. Pickles hated cats. Pickles got free of the boy and chased the cat. Pickles was lost. A few hours later, they found Pickles. I guess he chased that cat up a tree. And the leash got tangled in the branches of that tree and he fell. Pickles was wearing a choke chain. And before anyone could save the hero, he died swinging from that tree. And I'm sorry for this next joke. I have a mini theory that Pickles committed suicide. Or Pickles was killed to make it look like a suicide. The poll knew that Pickles was talking and got to him for retribution, man. You don't talk to the cops. I was thinking that Pickles was behind the, the theft the whole time. <laughs> oh, you think it was, it was all Pickles all the time then? I mean, yeah, that's where I'm at. Like, if it was Pickles did it, and then, like, I mean, that's a classic thing. Like, oh, my God, look what I found. Guys, yeah, that's yeah. the thing that everyone's... <laughs> I guess I'm, like, a hero now or something. And then he yeah. just... The, the crushing weight of fame. 
the uh yeah like you know the you know banging all those actresses on the set of that movie and, <laughs> and all the blow he was probably doing oh, I that's think it, it. Just, it just got to him that was too him. much yeah yeah yeah. Wow. yeah no people get very upset about animal death so i have to put the trigger warning in but yeah he definitely um, died yeah i mean that year. immediately upset me but yeah that's why i said please associate him with silly that makes it great yeah you're a sick fuck <laughs> <laughs> Especially because look at her, dude. She's already sad. She wants to die. You can't just go <laughs> making fun of her actual suicidal tendencies. Yeah, encourage her to go commit suicide yeah. now. Hey, wow. if you buy her a choke chain, that's on you. Uh, he's put to rest in Corbett's cottage backyard, which actually Corbett bought that cottage with the 6,000 pounds that he got for finding the trophy. So he thought it was a good place to bury. He's buried in the backyard there. He leaves, still leaves his legacy to this day, nearly 60 years later, his collar is on display at the National Football Museum in Manchester. Oh, God. Which one? Not the choke chain. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> that's why I, first thing it's I looked up. a little up, morbid. I'm like, is it the fucking choke chain? Because that goes somewhere else. That goes in like the fucking torture one that they have in Manchester, too. Like the yeah. Jack the Ripper fucking one. <laughs> yeah, the Jack. What's in the Jack the Ripper one? It's not just Jack the Ripper. It's a bunch of different morbid shit. But they have like, like mur it, murder weapons. So it's like Jack the Ripper's <laughs> knife. <laughs> Pickles <laughs> collar. <laughs> <laughs> Symbols of evil. Well, don't you remember they have the death mask of that guy they claimed was Jack the Ripper? And they uh, call it yeah, Jack yeah, the Ripper's yeah, death. Yeah. They have like a bunch yeah. of different death masks or whatever. It's probably, anyways, it would be funny if there, that was that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cursed <laughs> objects. <laughs> yeah. So there was actually a TV movie made about pickles in 2006 called Pickles, the dog who won the World Cup. Which I can't find, but I want to watch and with my children for fun. Is it like a fictionalized thing, or is it like a? I don't know. I'm guessing. I, I um, hope it's like where the dog like talks and goes like, "Come on, guys!" You know, when you see the, <laughs> the lips move, like I want it to be that, but it's probably a documentary, which is kind of sad. But that would be fun. Yeah, and then they they keep the death scene in. So was gonna, <laughs> do, do, do you think they'd include the death of the dog in there? Yeah. Just sort of ended on on him winning the World Cup. Or it's like a dark tale of how Pickles actually stole the World Cup and got yeah, yeah. committed suicide. Like our our fake story, but that's what it is. That yeah, would be it's awesome. like 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 a musician's biopic. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pickles, the dark side of Pickles. Bark hard. Well, yeah, bark hard. Yeah. <laughs> 2008, there was a plaque installed where Pickles found the World Cup to commemorate his achievement. You probably ask yourself, like, oh, this seems like it's wrapping up pretty good. Where's the mystery here, Richard? There's still more to this. We're not even done the story. So there's a podcast out there that I used for a ton of research into this case. Its name is Stealing Victory. So this is there's my podcast recommendation for the for the mark of the nice. episode. Pretty good one. Honestly, if you have a hard time with British accents, like I know this very deep fucking British cockney <laughs> accent. Like, if you're I, like me and you have a hard time with British accents. That's all I can understand them. I just can't do them. But like I I see TV shows now where they have like a very light British accent and then they subtitle it. Like, what the fuck? You can't people can't understand this. So, anyways, uh, it's very British. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Stealing Victory, the to uh, the host's name is Tom Pettifor. Oh, that, that's like a very last second bullet dodge of a last name. <laughs> yes. Tom I used to be Tom Pedophile, but I don't, I don't go by that anymore. Yeah, Tom Pettifor, uh, he says he thinks he figured out who actually stole the World Cup. Pettifor is a crime editor for the British tabloid The Mirror. So one of his informants told him that they knew who stole the World Cup, a guy named Sidney Q. So in the podcast, uh, Pettifor sets out to find out who Sidney Q was. Uh, he actually figures out a bunch of weird shit that isn't really, it's not hard to, like you can find it if you dig. But he puts it out there in Ceiling Victory. Like he figures out that the original police report when Pickles finds the World Cup, Corbett's original statement to the police, he just tells them that he found, like, he found the World Cup just sitting there. He opened it up. It was the World Cup. Pickles isn't even fucking mentioned at all. So he thinks, like, Pettifor thinks that Pickles' story was made up by the government to ease the fact that the FA lost the World Cup. And at the time, England was being laughed at, and it was, like, two weeks away from an election. So they just, like, let's make it up so the dog fucking did it. Because the queen has corgis. Let's make Pickles good. You know, like... And I, I don't know. Honestly, I think it worked because, like, whenever you look up the 1966 theft of the World Cup, all you see is pickles. You get fucking pickle stories, like a hundred of them. So I think it actually, like, buried it, which, cool, whatever. Like, 
it doesn't really matter now. It was fucking 60 years ago, but like at the time it probably made a big difference to these guys. Another detail that Pettifor finds out is that hours after the cup is stolen, when they find out, the FA, like Mears, calls FIFA and he tells them, like, I want to make a replica of the trophy, guys. And FIFA's like, absolutely not. You cannot make a fucking replica of that. Do not make any replicas. That is our design. Do not make any replicas. That is the World Cup. No. So what does the British do? Whatever they want. And they made one anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, the British. Yeah, that's it. They do it out there. All the stuff they want to do, right? FIFA didn't know either that it was stolen at the time when they asked. They asked because it was stolen. But they just went, can we just make a replica? Because they kind of wanted to hide the fact. They would find out very soon after that that wasn't the case. It was stolen. The FA was going to pretend they found the trophy and hopefully no one would notice that it was the replica, right? That's the whole, that was the whole point of it after. So they're like, oh, look, we found it. But it was just actually the replica. (laughs) The morning after Pickles found the trophy, the headline of the newspaper was World Cup returned within 48 hours. But they already found the trophy. And like back then when you're doing a newspaper, you had to set your press to what you were going to print like far before when Pickles and them found it. It was like nine o'clock at night when they found the, the trophy. So they already tipped off the newspaper that they found the trophy. So they knew they were going to make this replica and like swap it out. But by chance, fucking Pickles finds it that night, right? So I, That's pretty fucking interesting if you ask me. Was Pickles a plant? Pickles is a plant. That's what the, basically they're saying because the guy had a dog. They're like, make it so the dog found it, not you. It's cuter. And it'll sell more papers. So, huh. So the the trophy that they found is that's the fake is that the replica or the real one? That's part of the mystery. Now think about that. Is it the real one or is it the fucking replica? Because the FA was lying about a bunch of shit. So we'll get into more of their lies in a second. Wow, I'm devastated if Pickles is a fucking fraud. Pickles is a fraud. That's why he committed suicide. I can't live like this. Oh no. <laughs> the replica remained a secret for years. It was stored under the creator's bed for for like till 1997 it was sold at auction in 1997 at the auction they called it a replica whatever no one knew it existed like i guess a few people didn't know it existed because a it was valued at thirty thousand dollars now there's a bidding war at the auction with someone representing fifa and someone rep- in the brazilian football confederation fifa ended up spending 254.5 thousand pounds so they spent like a quarter over a quarter million pounds getting this 30,000 K thing. So they must've been like, is this the real one? Holy fuck. We have to buy this right now. FIFA put a report out after like, after rigorous testing, it's in fact the replica. Okay. We're going to believe the guy that didn't, you know what I mean? They spent super lots of money on it anyways. Yeah. So the replica now sits at the English national football museum, apparently. So Pettifor even goes too far to say as the police, the FA and Betchley, arranged for the statue to be found so Betchley's the guy like jackson so this is why it was found so quickly and pickles cover story was made up so most importantly it makes sense as to why Betchley's robbery charge was dropped and the fact that he only got two years in jail when he was facing a life sentence so pedophore speculates that Betchley arranged for the cup to be put in corbett's neighborhood to be found so they just found it like, oh, my God, it's here, even though they knew it was going to be there. Instead of like pointing the finger at him, they said, you do two years, you give us it back. Let's just wipe the slate clean. OK, hmm. so who's Sidney Q? What the fuck is that part about this whole thing? Uh, Sidney Q was the nickname of a guy named Sidney Cuglier. Uh, Cuglier matched the description of the man at Central Hall that the security guard ha- gave. Slick back, black hair, thin lips, long face, five foot eight. Cuglier was a lifelong thief. And was in and out of jail his entire adult life for one heist or another. Pettifor found a living nephew of Cuglier. It was a known secret amongst the Cuglier family that Sidney had stolen the World Cup. Cuglier and his brother went to Central Hall on that quiet Sunday to steal the millions of dollars worth of stamps. When they got in, Sidney saw the cup and decided that would be the better steal. Little did they know the cup was gold plated, not even fucking full gold, just worth way less than the stamps they could have just taken stamps and sold them probably a lot easier in this yeah but i mean how are you going to transport 50 million pounds of stamps (laughs) (laughs) no one's that strong 
Yeah, no, so no. the only connection they have between Cougliere and Betchley is that they lived in the same neighborhood. So it's a little weak on that. It's not like there's no w- ever any proof of them doing crimes together or anything like that. But the story is so famous within their family that when Cougliere died, they had wreaths made up in the shape of the Jules Rimet trophy and put them on his casket. So like that's how much they talked about him stealing the World Cup and getting away with it. Now we have Cougliere as the real thief. Like, what's the mystery here, Richard? Well, here's it coming. <laughs> the trophy was found. Thieves identified. New dog for us dogs to look up to. Story's not over, though. England wins the World Cup, like I said. Players from the winning team got a total of 22,000 pounds. This is just an FYI for the fun of it, for their effort. Um, that's divided amongst the team. There's 22 people that were involved in the team, so they each got 1,000 pounds each, which is far less than the 6,000 pounds Corbett got and probably the equivalent of how much Pickles made after finding the World Cup. Wow, the players didn't got shit all compared to the actual fucking dog. Amazing. So England keeps the trophy for the next four years. No more incidents, which was good. Then in 1970, the World Cup is held in Mexico, And the worldwide competition is won by Brazil after they thrashed Italy 4-1. Brazil had won the World Cup in 58 and 62, so their 1970s victory made them the first country to win the Cup three times. And that meant, based on the original rules of Jules Rimet, that the Cup belonged to Brazil forever now. The new World Cup is made after 53 different people put in designs for it. The one we know now... And then the Jules Rimet Trophy ends up on display at the Brazil Football Commission for the rest of its days. Now I'm going to put another trigger warning here. Trigger warning. That was really fucking... Okay. Uh-oh. I don't know how to bring this up. The Jules Rimet Trophy would be polished every day in its case. One day in 1983, I guess the trophy was trying to escape from its case and got tangled in the curtain that was hanging and it hung itself. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you keep doing this to us, Richard? <laughs> the guy who polished the trophy daily found the trophy hanging from his neck outside the display case. The trophy died that day. Uh, just kidding. The world is so cruel and unfair. <laughs> yes, yeah, not cool, man. Uh, 1983 was a big year for the trophy, actually. In 1983, the goddess Nike was once again nicked. So much for the cocky 1966 Brazil comments that Brazilian gangsters would never steal the trophy because they love and respect soccer so much. Yeah, it got stolen in 1983. Uh, A banker named Sergio Pereira Ares, better known as Peralta, walked through the Brazilian Football Confederation as a representative of the Brazilian football club Club Atletico de Minas Gerias. I don't know how to say that, but it's a football club, which they deny that this guy ever worked for them, but you would. He notices that the Jules Rimet trophy was on display on the ninth floor and it's behind bulletproof glass, like a thick chunk of bulletproof glass. But the frame of the indestructible case was just held by wood and nails. So this guy's like, I could fucking steal that. <laughs> that's, that's, you just pull off the frame, pop the fucking glass right up. That's mine. <laughs> It's like that piece of wood that was holding the door earlier, right? It just it makes no sense. Exactly. So Peralta goes to see his friend Antonio Seta, also known as Broa. They all have nicknames for some reason, but the nicknames are worth it. So this guy's nickname is Broa, who has a reputation of being one of the best safe robbers in Brazil. So Peralta tells his buddy Broa about the easy score he found on the ninth floor of the Brazilian Football Confederation building. Broa is outraged. I'm not going to help you, Peralta. I'm never going to steal the Jules Rimet trophy. It means too much to me. My brother died the day they won that of a heart attack when he was excited from winning. I will never steal that trophy, you son of a bitch. Like, I find that hilarious. My brother died for that trophy. He just cheered and died. He probably had heart disease, dude. Relax. Yeah. Bro is pissed. And whatever, Peralta's like, okay, fine. And he goes and finds another shady friend of his, uh, an ex-policeman named Jose Vieira. And his nickname was Chico Barbuda. Now, do you know anything, any Spanish at all? Anybody? No. Nope. Nope. Chico Barbuda means the bearded man. So uh, <laughs> the bearded man didn't have the same sentiment as Broa. He was like, yes, we're doing this for sure. I'm in. So the bearded man also said, like, I need to get my buddy in on this too, on this heist. His name was Jose Luis Vieira da Silva. And his alias was Luis Bigode, a.k.a. The mustache. So <laughs> the bearded man and the mustache are on the case for this one for Peralta. Nice. 
So on December 19th, 1983, the bearded man and the mustache go visit the Brazilian Football Confederation for a visit, just to go do a tour. But instead of leaving when they're done, the mustache and the bearded man hide in a closet. No one notices. When everyone leaves for the night, the facial hair bandits do their thing. Shave? <laughs> nope. They did. That's not their thing, dude. That's not their thing. They'd be called the shave boys. The bearded man. <laughs> Bearded man and the mustache. Sm the smooth smooth boy. <laughs> <laughs> the wooden frame of the bulletproof cabinet was forced open with a crowbar. And it was easy heist. They probably would have gotten away with it. The only reason the police figured out who stole the cup, though. All oh, the hair. Broa. Yeah, yeah, Broa. Yeah, I just sprinkled around at the. <laughs> <laughs> I leave a piece of my mustache for you. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like the wet bandits when they like make turn on the water in home alone it's like they're the bearded bandits just leave or the facial hair bandits yeah. just leave the yeah, facial not hair. even on purpose though they're just so <laughs> fucking hairy yeah, yeah. <laughs> so bro is pissed bro is pissed about the whole thing and he kept telling everyone about peralta's plan like peralta's like trying to keep the secret wrong guy to go to dude bro is pissed he's telling everyone so right away as soon as it's gone the police go catch Peralta and the facial hair bandits. No trophy to be found anywhere, though. The trophy's actually never been found. So part of this mystery is where is the trophy? So what's the theories on this? This that's that's trophy's gone. Peralta stole it with the fucking bearded man. Oh my god. Pickles is alive. Pickles is alive. Okay. Pickles is still alive. Yeah, he ran away with it. He faked his death. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He lived another 15 years to go steal it. Yeah, dude. All right. That's cool. Smart enough to find it. I mean, Pickles still alive. Okay. I like that. I didn't write yeah, that. Yeah. Pickles has got Pickles. Pickles ran off with the trophy. Do you think Pickles found a dog that looked exactly like him and then just off that dog in the tree? Yeah, dude. They can't be collies. They all fucking look the same. Like, I mean, like, if I can get her to fucking move. Still. <laughs> Do you think Pickles shaved his face <laughs> into a mustache and no one knew it? Just how he, oh, Pickles was be. the mustache yeah. the whole time? Yeah, maybe he like, he yeah. like got his ears cut so that like, you know, maybe he <laughs> short eared dog and all uh it's fair enough. and all that. That is that is the case though. Silly does have you know, her her ears are up on like a collie and her tail's missing. Maybe Silly is Pickles. Think of Silly as Pickles. Anyways, um <laughs> Theory number one. The trophy was melt I, I am so even if we're not friends anymore, when when that dog dies and you have to deal with your children's feelings, I'm going to be right there. <laughs> jam it all up in your face and ass. <laughs> Silly's not dead, though. You're just imagining. It's your own imagination. You don't have to imagine anything. <laughs> None just... appreciate this passive aggressive implicity. <laughs> Where's Pickles, dad? Oh, my God. Anyways, uh, <laughs> I'm imagining that kid found him too, which is fucking brutal. Yeah, that would be hard yeah. for sure. Yeah. You know, yeah, dog hanging in a tree. Especially because oh, you let him go. You know what I mean? Like you were like, I'm going to take pickles for a walk and he escapes from you. Oh, yeah. And you, and you did like choke pain. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's oh, tough. Man. Yeah. Theory number one, the, the the trophy was melted down, never to be found again. And if it was melted down, it was melted down by idiots who don't understand how gold plating works. Then they screwed up and sold it for far less than the value is. Like sterling silver at its highest price was 73 cents a gram. The trophy weighed 3.8 kilograms. So assuming you get full price on the sterling silver, I don't know where the gold, pl I don't know there's gold plating in it, but like, I don't, they can't add too much to it. You'd get like only $2,774, which is far less than what it's actually worth. So you fucked up. If you melted it down, you're an idiot. You know what I mean? Like they fucked up big time. So that's, if it's melted down, I, which I don't think it is, it's people just say it could have been melted down. Sure. Was it? Who knows? Maybe England secretly colonized it back. <laughs> <laughs> Theory number two is it was sold to some foreign buyer and just never to be seen again. Like I'm sure someone would have bought that, like some Russian billionaire or some shit like that. I was just going to say, it would be just like some rich Russian guy somewhere to be like, Oh, do you believe this? Look at that. Yeah. The, <laughs> the, <laughs> the trophy. The Jules Remet trophy. I got the Jules Remet the trophy. It's like, it's Jules hey, Remet. Right. You, you, you can do, you can do Russian. There you go. Good Russian for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. I just keep thinking of Chekhov. 
But even if they did buy it, like you can't really display it though. Like, you know what I mean? Like you're saying that, but someone would, it's a fucking world cup, man. Someone would have busted you by now. You'd have to like hide it in a vault. So it's like a super shitty buy. Like it had to be nah, hidden somewhere off. Not if they're rich enough. Nobody cares. That's true. That's true. Um. So yeah, the next series, the, the fake one was the real one and the other one might be missing. So at some point, the FA wrapped up the fake one and put it in Pickle's yard. The fake one has been around forever, no one knowing the difference until it shows up at auction. So, like, why else would they spend a quarter million fucking pounds unless they thought it, the other one was fake, right? Like, if they knew the other one was real, they must have thought that one must have been the real. Like, they wouldn't have never spent that much money, is my point. So, I feel like you take your new trophy, you know what I mean? Okay, so you, you go spend your bunch of money, then you take your new real trophy replace it with the fake one on display and claim the one you just got was the fake one the whole time. And then you just like at 1997, the whole mystery was solved. It's done. Now they finally got it back. I kind of laying on that's what happened to this whole fucking trophy. It was gone for the whole time, you know, and they just got it back in 1997. That's my guess. Seems plausible. There's other theories though. (laughs) One of them is the next one is this is the last one. I think actually Uh, sitting on some Brazilian mantle, of somebody who doesn't even understand its significance could be just sitting on one of the guy's house that stole it. You can't really do with anything with it. I'm sure in like 40 to 50 more years when no one's alive, that stole the darn thing will just pop up. Most people that were caught for the theft in Brazil were out of jail instantaneously. The mustache and the bearded man spent maybe a jail, a day in jail. They both tried to flee though and got killed. And Peralta only spent like two years in jail. Yeah, so I'm guessing the grandson of the mustache, now nicknamed Peach Fuzz, uh, has it in a cupboard, (laughs) not even knowing his fancy cup he never uses, actually the most famous missing sports trophy in the world. That's the fun explanation. It's just sitting in some poor guy's house and he drinks out of it every once in a while. Go like, look at this cool cup my dad left here. Huh. Like it's like where he throws his change when he walks in the house, like you know, the front <laughs> yeah. door. That's it. And there it is, just overflowing with what is it like Bra- Brazilian pesos or I don't know what they have down there, but uh... <laughs> uh I don't like I think I I I wouldn't be surprised if it's just some rich dude that's got it because like people steal like paintings and those have to go somewhere. They're not just gonna go hide it. Like I bet there's a bunch of rich people that have got a whole bunch of stolen stuff from around the world that just it's a big pissing contest amongst them. Who's got what? I guarantee you it's on somebody's show. That that, I, that could be true too. Like just in the basement of Elon Musk's mansion, they just have like no, exactly. They're these like super villains in the world. You got your Elon Musk's, your Vladimir Putin's, you've got your dictators and stuff like that. That, you know the smoking cigars i got a monet well do you have a remake and they pull it yeah. out like, oh, yeah. nice. <laughs> <laughs> i mean truly i think that is i think like because i think like sometimes like who who are any of us to like verify that any like you know really expensive museum piece is actually the real really expensive museum piece that's in the museum you know what i mean for sure for sure there could be so many replicas everything could be replicas like this computer you could be a replica I mean, I think that's racist of you to say. Which oh, I... silly could be a replica of pickles. Well, we can be racist against silly. She's a dog. That's fair. It's cool to be racist against animals, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you heard me earlier. I said they're all they all look the fucking same. It's like <laughs> like ra- racist platitudes against dogs are like okay. They are a lower level of species, so it makes sense, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're all uh, alike. Lazy. <laughs> I can attest to that. That's for sure. Yeah, no, I I believe it. So, okay, the billionaires having it is a pretty good, like, honestly, it's hard to pick which one because some idiot could have melted it down to, I don't really think that's what happened, but some moron could have just done that. No, yeah, like, I don't think, and like, but they if they caught the guys that, like, they that know that took it, like, like, did they not confess? Do they just, or did they just say we're going to go to jail and then and and just like live with with the consequences of of you never knowing? And they never said shit to the police, so they got caught because of Baroa. So they they just kept their mouth shut. They left. The, those other guys got let out because of lack of evidence. But they tried to flee the country after. So I'm assuming that they had it, trying to get out, or they were getting to it, and then they got shot down by the fucking policia. So Peralta's the only. He spent two years in jail. That's it. And this happened when? When did that get, all happen with the that that was 19, 80s? 1983, yeah. So that was 83. So you think the Brazilians were bidding on that 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 one that like the the replica one 
just so they could have uh, the, the like a trophy back again or what? Well, they, I didn't really put in the script, but Brazil made its own replica for events too. So they had, there's uh. actually three floating around apparently, which I don't know. I don't believe that. I believe like, I don't know. I don't know if they just bought the real one from auction. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Honestly, they had the fake the whole time and somebody just had the fucking real one, put it up for auction eventually, but the guy who put it up for auction. Okay. Sorry. Maybe I'm wrong about this. Cause I, I should have mentioned this, but I forgot about it. The guy who put it up for auction was the guy who made the replica. Like he was the artist who, yeah, and he had it in his drawer at his house. But like, that's an easy excuse, you know. Like that's an easy one. That's like, oh, it's the replica made from the guy who made it. Like, is it though? I do like the super villain rich people. I find that's probably very likely, honestly. But I want to believe it's some poor guy who doesn't know he's sitting on like a fucking. Five million dollar piece of like history. <laughs> I want I want that to be true too. And then so originally, like when back in the sixties, when this all first when it got stolen the first time. So do they know for sure that it was that was it Batchley guy that actually like, or do they still never figure out who actually stole that either? Other than it could have been that Sydney Q guy, but we're not completely positive. I'm going with Sydney Q probably was the mastermind behind it, but I think Batchley had more of a role in it than. I'm just the middleman getting 500 pounds. I'll go get it for you if you let me go. I think they're working together. And to have, you know, 50 million pounds worth of, you know, of stamps there. And, and like, it's that lack of security just seems like, don't, did they have like, like alarms back in the sixties? Am I, am I wrong about that? There's nothing like that or what? It's a church, man. It's no one's going to go steal from a church, dude. They're just going to put a couple locks. Everything will be good. I'm right here with my tea and crumpets. Don't worry, man. (laughs) Don't worry. I agree. Uh, I think that's a fucking obtuse amount of money to just leave sitting in a locked room. Like, what are you guys thinking? But this guy, this Alsa guard, the security company got raked through the coals after this. Like they, I would be surprised if they survived that scandal because they did so many things wrong. They were supposed to have the, the contract too stated that they were supposed to have someone beside it at all times watching it, like in a fucking chair beside it. But they said, man, fuck it. So they didn't even listen to their own security protocols, right? Very, very inadequate. It seems that way. Like, Terrible. You know, just a, a pad, like I'm assuming with just a padlock cut and then that's it. It's like in, off, off it goes. And then that's it. Like no, no alarms, just Nothing. one padlock. Here you go. Yep. Oh, well. Yeah, and and stealing victory. If you guys do, if anybody listens to it out there, uh, it's very well done. It goes far more detail. It's like six or seven series on just the the sixty six theft. I subscribed. I subscribed to the podcast, so I'm going to listen to it while I'm massaging people. That'll yeah, yeah. be one of those things. Yeah, that's it. You know. <laughs> whoa, whoa! You just give those out for free? Yeah. What? I thought, <laughs> no. I thought you're, As, you've been massaging be RJ this whole time. RJ, you've been massaging RJ this whole time. I haven't got one massage yet, which is cool. Like, I get it. I'll, I'll pay. Well, you. it was my idea, so I think I should yeah. get all the massage. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. But you do this for a job. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna give us a bill by the time he leaves. Uh, you you got suckered into a fucking massage. You only do like half your face with makeup at like a department store. They go, you want the other half? You got to pay. You're like, what the fuck? Like they're doing that. that yeah, that's it. Exactly. That's it. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Unless you're going to hand over some money. Yeah. I, I'm fine with just have the massage. You said no <laughs> more getting jerked off in the office. So I don't need the last part. Are we going to, are we going to leave them with the, maybe that's the, what payment is, is the solve for them. What are we going to leave them with to solve with billionaires, super billionaires, pickles? Well, uh, maybe, maybe there's a middle ground. Let's flesh out your pickles a little bit. You haven't really. Yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. Maybe there's a middle ground. Like what if, what if it's, it's okay. Maybe it's your thing, Richard, with the, with the poor guy. All right. So he's, you know, uh, just, uh, you know, hanging out, going to whatever his manual labor job is. And then he's driving down the road and he stops because there's a dog, just a stray dog. All right. Okay. And the dog's got something in its mouth. It's all shimmery and gold. And he's like, what the fuck? So he picks the dog up and brings it with him. He doesn't know what this, this cup thing is, but he brings him home. And now he's got a dog and this dog came with a cup. And they're just both at his house now. And they're, you know, his or whatever. But I mean, who, who benefits from that? That's, that's pickles. That's his whole cover, dude. All right. And I don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe there was money involved somewhere. Maybe Pickles is sitting on some kind of fortune. Maybe the money's in, you know, the Cayman Islands or some shit. Uh, but he's just been incognito all these years. 
Pickles is like, like the littlest hobo of the World Cup. Like he just goes from town to town with the cup, like solving. No, crimes. no, no, no. He he stayed, dude. He stayed. He stayed with whoever whoever this guy is or family or whatever that found him. That's why we don't know where he is. Oh, okay. I mean, like people think they know where he uh, is. Uh, so yeah, and and but... the people that found him, they don't know that 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 shimmering gold thing is the is is victory. No, is that... no, they have no idea. Yeah, they I just see. Say, he's a weird cup. This dog had. It's his yeah, cup. He tried drinks water out of it. Are they? Are they? Is this in Brazil or in Canada or U.S. or where is where is pickles now? Like what? We don't know. I don't know, man. Wherever the fuck you said it was last. No Brazil, but I mean, if <laughs> if that's the case, then it's like the rarest Brazilian ever to not know soccer cup, like the World Cup, like the only one Brazilian. You were suggesting that that was a person. I'm suggesting that like they can't do anything. Well, yeah, I, I guess so. Yeah, I like your idea better. I'm just saying my thoughts more like. They have it there and they can't really do shit with it because it's the fuck you're going to go to jail. You're going to get shot by the fucking like it has to sit there and just be a cup you drink out of every once in a while. Like, All I right. don't know how rich it is. Like, I don't even really understand it. It's sitting there. The mustaches or peach fuzz, I guess I call them. He wouldn't have known like that'd be beyond like the new World Cup exists. So that old one, I didn't even know there was an old one. You know, I, mean, I didn't. I didn't until you. We, I'm on this podcast. I thought it was always that that one that the hand, you, the, yeah. the two guys holding the cup. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the big yeah, I don't, I don't know one, about yeah, soccer, yeah. so. Hmm. But I like I like Pickles as a mortal being who just lives forever with the cup. That's why he has the cup. It brings his power. You fill it with water, he drinks from it, he gets another five years. His choke yeah. chain yeah. loosens up just to say uh, he, he sustained on his on his own greed. <laughs> <laughs> they're all they're all like that, dude. They're all so greedy. Every billionaire that exists is actually a dog in a human suit, and they just get to their basement. They unzip it like, ah. <laughs> they have all the world's treasures. On all dogs are just conspiring against yeah. all human art. This 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 so, little tirade is gonna get us tossed in like whatever cesspool that like fucking <laughs> you know the Daily Wire's on and, and <laughs> Alex Jones wherever he went. <laughs> Honestly, like that is one of my wishes for the show, and I hope it happens once. We're one of our ridiculous. <laughs> we become racist theories. pariahs. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm already a racist pariah. But the, what I'm talking, <laughs> what I'm talking about is that one of our dumbass theories just somebody picks up on it, goes, "That sounds real, man," and it goes around and just like goes viral as the theory for what happened mm. to whatever stupid thing. Mm. That is the wish for the show. Okay. <laughs> one day that goes viral some like stupid. That. yeah what do you like what do you think the odds of a dog stealing the world cup and like what 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 do you think the odds of a theory like that are of sticking low. low 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 it's when we get the plausible ones that are like so stupid that they could be real that's just like fun it's like pickles the movie like the 2006 pickles mm. the dog who won the world cup our theory on the movie i want that to happen like that's just fun you know but something no, you that's got, just you gotta fun. have hope richard you gotta start thinking like a dog Oh, that's right. I could be a millionaire. I could have a year's worth of Spillex dog food. Exactly. We're going to go with what? Pickles is, uh, has the dog World Cup? This is up to us, me and RJ. This is our <laughs> sure. dog. Sure. It, it ultimately, I think I think it, it landing in Pickles' hands in the end, and uh, you know, the fake suicide is probably the, the most plausible explanation. Oh, so since he didn't actually die, I could take out the trigger warning. Yeah, potentially. Yeah, potentially. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's if you want to believe this theory for sure. That, that's where you want <laughs> yeah. to go. Then, yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, yeah go, go ahead and do that. But, but he killed another dog. He had to kill a a, a dog. That is true. A dog still died. Yeah, yeah. Did, you know, that's may true. not have been pickles. You know, all the off-color jokes I made about dead dogs is probably okay now, right? Sure. Sure. Yeah, go, go, go whisper him into Newt's ear. <laughs> hey, Newt. Hey, Newt. I just watched Private Dicks and I think RJ's the funniest. What? Come on. <laughs>